Hey, g'day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another cracking edition of Investing in the US podcast. From Los Angeles, I'm your host, Reed Goosens. Good as always to have you with us on the show. Now, as you know, it is my job to explore, dissect, and interview the cream of the crop when it comes to business and entrepreneurship here in the United States, so you can all make the right investing decisions to create massive amounts of cash flow, which will lead to financial freedom and long-term wealth. As you know, I'm all about sharing the knowledge with my loyal listeners, and there's absolutely no BS on this show, just straight to the nuts and bolts, but... Knowledge without action means you're just a fence sitter. So be educated first and foremost. Listen to my show each and every week. But you also got to go out and take massive amounts of action. And hopefully, the cracking guests on my show will inspire you to do so. If you do like this show, please give us a review on iTunes. And you can follow me, as always, on Facebook and Twitter by searching Reed Goosens. You can find the show wherever we podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. But you can also now find these shows up on my YouTube channel, which is at reedgoosens.com. Click on the link, and it'll take you to the video recordings of these podcasts each and every week. You can see my ugly mug, but you can also see the gorgeous faces of my incredible guests. But enough out of me. We're going to get straight into today's show. And on today's show, I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Reed from Ardor SEO. Chris started out as a software engineer and worked for several big companies before the global financial crisis hit in 2008. He ended up developing a game and was looking for ways to promote it, which led him to learn about SEO. He started creating tools to increase website rankings, which is now the basis of his company, which is Ardor SEO. Ardor SEO is the ultimate multinational backlink building company that helps businesses achieve utmost success in their respective niches. But enough out of me, let's get him out here. G'day, Chris. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today, mate? Hey, Reid. It's great great to be uh, virtually in LA. <laughs> <laughs> mate, lovely to have you on the show. Um, I do detect that you are not an American. Where are you from originally? I'm also Australian. I'm from uh, Brisbane in, well, Northern Australia. Northern Australia. Sunny Queensland, mate. Love it. Go, go, in, the, go the Maroons. <laughs> <laughs> For those uh, listening out there, it means rugby league. <laughs> but mate, before we get into today's show, can you want to explain a little bit more about who is Chris Reed and a little bit about Ardor SEO? Yeah, so briefly, a uh, software engineer from Australia, uh, moved to the UK to work in the financial markets because that's where the big money is. Right. Uh, sold my soul to the devil for many years uh, until the global financial crisis freed me. Uh, it was kind of a blessing in disguise. It was... Yeah, well, it was great because I had a big sack of money, so I was able to go and travel the world for a couple of years and kind of work out what the hell I wanted to do with my life. And I um, ended up going back to Australia and building an online game just because I wanted to learn a, a new style of programming because I always did desktop stuff, which you do in banks, and I wanted to do web programming. And then I was like, well, how the heck do you get people to a website to play a game? And so I started learning about SEO, and I was just blown away by it. I thought, man, this stuff is awesome. And I uh, had a Russian girlfriend at the time. She asked me to move to Russia and thought, sure, why not? Got nothing else to do. (laughs) And uh, I didn't speak the language at the time, so I couldn't get a job. And I thought, well, maybe I can make some money out of this. And you know, a whole bunch of years later, it turns out I could. <laughs> nice, man. Well, that's really, really incredible. I love hearing the, the you know, the other expats, particularly uh, Australians, just getting out there and crushing it, taking, you know, the world by by the balls, <laughs> so to speak, and, and giving it a crack. But let's rewind the clock just slightly um, and tell us how you made your first dollar way back when. Yeah, so uh, backlinks, uh, a backlink is a link from one website to another. And that's the fundamentals of how Google works. Like, Google does not talking, trust. I'm actually talking a little bit about how you first made your first ever dollar as an entrepreneur. Like, so I'm talking about as a kid. Uh, oh, man, I really wouldn't be able to, uh, uh, probably couldn't tell you that. I mean, I'm struggling to remember how I even started my business. It just happened out of <laughs> goofing around. And, like, yeah, so so we I, I started building backlinks to my website, website to make it rank. Mm hmm. And then I went, wow, this is cool because it started ranking. So I went, well, let's, I'll build some more software because I like building software. So I built software of how to manage backlinks and build backlinks. And somehow I started selling those. I, I mean, our first employee, I got out of um, whatever Upwork used to be called, yes. uh, whatever <laughs> the old name was. But I, I really don't remember how the first customer came about, but it was all online. No man nice so let's do dive into your 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 business uh, i want to learn a lot more about it but f- 
But let's learn. I want to first uh, construct the conversation in a way that we're going to learn learn about the backlinks, learn about SEO, why it's important, and then I want you to go into think of like um, if I was walking into a restaurant and I had a menu of options and, and sort of walk me through the sort of options you have in your business. And maybe there's some off menu products and there's some on menu products from from the freebie mm-hmm. stuff to all the way through to the high you know the high paying dollar stuff that really makes the, the business tick. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, yeah, a question like I get asked all the time is, you know, how much is SEO? Uh, a guy who apparently is opening a fashion label or something in, in London emailed me yesterday, heard me on a podcast and he's like, oh, I got $200 to spend. I want to like SEO my website. I'm like, yeah, anything in London is super competitive because it's valuable. Anything that's got value, there's people going after that market and $200, I whatever your market in London, it's not going to win because it's like there's there's people that SEO companies that go and rank for keywords and then sell those leads to business owners. So like, uh, you know, you might have a limousine service and so someone can build a website, get leads for a limousines and then sell them to you. So every niche is taken like and the more valuable it is, the the more competitive it is like uh, terms like personal injury lawyer, especially in the US, uh, yeah, you can be looking with AdWords, you can be looking upwards of $200 per click. Wow. You know, so, because they're, they're valuable, right? right? So, okay, it might take you 20 clicks, so it costs you $4,000, but you get a customer that's worth 20 grand, well, you know, if that makes sense for your business, then why wouldn't you do that all day long? Right. So, you, you can imagine that the organic is is really uh, valuable too because AdWords actually only gets about 2% of the clicks, the other 98% go to the organic. So, you know, if, if, if it's $200 per click on the AdWords, how much is that number one spot worth? Right, right, right. Um, for all those people who are listening out there, maybe we should just quickly do a bit of history lesson on what SEO is and, and clicking and backlinks and all that sort of good stuff uh, to then... Uh, I have your website ranking for certain searches, right? Because that's what you want. You want to essentially be on the number one page for Google for a particular, you, you know, you, you use personal injury lawyer. I can imagine it's very, very busy. But for someone in, involved in real estate investing, for example, how would they rank up further up the list and, and, and maybe explain the metrics behind it and the mechanics so they can then understand why it takes or it's such a hard time for something like real estate investing to, to rank on the number one page? Yeah, so it's really important that you have a nice website, Google wants to have a good user experience. Okay? So if your website doesn't load fast, Google doesn't want to send people there. Right. If it doesn't have the content, well, it's not going to rank. So certainly you need to have your website in good technical shape and have good content and always make sure you write the content for the user, not for a search engine. Don't go keyword stuffing. Google's pretty smart about trying to work that out but it won't convert anyway. And at the end of the day, rankings aren't the important thing. New customers are. So always write for the customer. But the thing is that if you've got two websites that are essentially the same, you know, they have just as good content, just as nice design, all that sort of good stuff, then it comes down to your reputation and authority. Because Google doesn't trust what you say. Like you can write, I'm the greatest real estate investor in the world. Well, how do they know? So they trust what everyone else is saying about you, who's linking to you, the, the, the backlinks from other websites. And you know, not every link is the same. It's like we've all been in a taxi when a taxi driver is giving you some sort of financial advice. You, know, you, you don't tend to, you know, well, you take it with a grain of salt. But you know, your investment banker friend might give you similar advice. You know, he might be the devil, but you listen up because he knows what he's talking about. And Google feels it's the exact same with links. Like a link from CNN or the BBC is going to stand a lot more than your local newspaper. So, so it's really, keep, that's, uh, a, that, that's what a backlink is. Yeah. <laughs> and so how do you then try to get them to a backlink from another website? So you're trying to get people on other websites to talk about you, then you know, link them to your particular website? Is that, and that's great for, for, your, for your visibility on Google? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the more uh, close to your niche, the better. Like, you know, if you're a yoga teacher and you had yoga studios that are talking about you, like say you went and did a, you know, exposition at some other studio and they had an article about you, well, that means a lot because 
Google goes, oh, these people know about yoga and they're linking to you, so that must be great. Where if the local butcher has a link to you, well, it's not so niche relevant. It's still going to help, but not as much. It, it does get really complicated. Like, a, you know, we've got a customer here in, in Cambodia that uh, does Mekong river cruises. And Mekong is a river that runs through Vietnam, uh, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, up into China. It's a really long river. And uh, the search results in London for Mekong River Cruise and the search results here in Cambodia are very different because also they know that the person's looking for different things. Like if you're in London, well, which country do you mean the Mekong? And you're probably looking at research. And so articles like in The Guardian show up where here it shows operators that have cruises because you're much more likely to actually be making a booking because you're on the Mekong. And so the actual links that help uh, rank those sites are also different. So you know, uh, a local site here is going to have a lot more weighting to a local local industry, where you know the the British sites are going to have a lot more weight to those those ones ranking. So it, it does get pretty tricky. I could imagine. So how does then your role come into it? I, I've got SEO on my site. Uh, I pay someone to do it. I don't really ask a lot of questions, <laughs> so but I know that I pay them an hourly rate, and they got they, they got to spend a certain amount of hours a week getting my website up, and, and you know, ranking for investing and re- real estate and U.S. real estate and podcasts and all that sort of great stuff. So, how does your role get, bridge the gap for me for someone who doesn't know what you do? Yeah, it certainly gets tricky because you know, like like as I said before, people often ask me how much is SEO. I said, well, Hotels.com literally spend tens of millions of dollars every year on SEO. Right. You know, you, if you Google hotel any city in the world, boom, they're in the top 10. And you're like, how much is that worth? That, that's worth a phenomenal amount of money. Mm-hmm. And so, so if you can spend $10 million and make $100 million, well, wouldn't you do it? Right. You know, every dollar you spend, you're getting a $50 return. Well, yeah, how many dollars are you going to spend? And it's the same thing that, that we try and focus on too. Like... Any business owner, they shouldn't go and become SEO experts. Like, you know, I, I am a business owner and not understand that I need to understand accounting, but I don't do accounting. I have an accountant. You know, I hate the damn thing. Every month when I have to look over the P&L, it's like, oh, the worst day. Of, I hate it. But I know I have to do it. Right. And so you, you need to understand how digital marketing works and SEO works. Uh, and so you should work with someone that, that builds a strategy to help you achieve your goal. Like any any SEO company that has set packages, I really think I do not have the end user in mind. Like, you know, when they got the bronze, silver and gold package, you know, it's like, well, why would that suit my business? That suits your business because it makes it easy for them to work stuff out. And it does make it, it conceptually easy for the end user. Like. There's a nice saying that people don't buy the best product, they buy the easiest to understand. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's a nice easy way to sell stuff because you can go, oh, we've got the small, medium and large, what do you want? But that doesn't mean it's going to fit your needs or your goals. So I think it's a really crappy way for the people sell SEO. So how would you then recommend for someone who's starting out a business, real estate investing, crowdfunding, trying to be more visual online, um, what sort of tips and advice can you give them to help them get more SEO related and then you know get to a point where they want to make, you know, increase their reach online and attract more customers? So uh, you get so much domain authority. So the amount of backlinks that you have, they generally come to your, your homepage. So that becomes domain authority. And that then gets spread through how many pages you have. So say if you have 100 points of domain authority, if you then... The vast majority, like 50 points, would go to the front, the home page, and then say you have like uh, silo pages, your big category pages, they'll get like 20 points, and then the other pages will get like 10 or five or whatever. And the more pages you have, the less points each page gets, so the less they're going to rank. Hmm. So, and it, the reason that kind of works, it's like if you're pumping out content and no one's listening to it or no one's watching it or linking to it then Google doesn't care about it. They're like, why should I rank this? Because no one else in the world cares about it, so why should we? And so you need to put the same amount of effort into your content. Yeah, it's great to have good content, but it's good to get it out there. 
you know, and heck, that's why I do podcasts. I hope, hope that I'm providing some valuable information. People like it. And, you know, that builds our reputation. That gets us a juicy backlink. And, you know, it's, I'm talking about what I do every day. So it's right. not hard. Right, right, you know, right. so it, a, a great way to build your business is to get out there rather than posting stuff on your website, go and work with other people that need to know what you do. Whatever you do, there's other people that are interested in it and need content for their stuff. So go and help them and educate people and show that you're an expert in what you do and, you know, get a nice backlink at the same time. Nice. So t- talk to me then about the differences between, you know, when we when you create a website, right, like this particular podcast, it goes out across many, many, many channels that are well-established channels, iTunes, SoundCloud, The Stitches. We're now on, on YouTube, right? I'm using that platform to, you know, to get my message out. So when I then put a link of, of say, SoundCloud on my website, does that help my website? People go and then, you know, but they may be listening through through the iTunes, you know, link or the SoundCloud link. They're not listen, necessarily listening through my regoosens.com. They don't go to regoosens.com, click on the podcast, and then, you know, they, they, don't, they don't go through that. They, they prefer to use the apps that, that have easy access. So how does, how does that sort of gray area work trying to link the two together? Yeah, I mean, that, well, so that, that sort of stuff's good for driving traffic. You know, obviously iTunes has traffic, so it's good to actually get listeners. But on an SEO uh, scale, it doesn't have that much usage. Like, it's like a link from Facebook, right? Anyone can get a link from Facebook, so it's not valuable. Right. Where, like, not everyone can get a link from the BBC, so that is valuable. You know, it's, that's, that's the kind of difference, you know. It's, it's great if you can still get traffic, like... You know, having a YouTube video that, you know, I was looking at that uh, gangman, gangman style the other day. It's over 3 billion views. Right. And like, man, it's crazy. So it's like, yeah, that could drive some traffic to your website and fantastic. But the link's not going to be worth anything because anyone can get a link from YouTube. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, so you're saying even though I put something up on YouTube that could get 3 billion it doesn't actually help my my personal website that I've you know got sitting off in the background. Even though I've got three billion on the platform of YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, certainly it'd be great to send those people to your website. <laughs> Fan, yeah, fantastic. But it, in an SEO pers- pers- perspective, it's not going to help. Interesting. So, talk to me a little bit about how the local businesses can you know start getting beat the listings on on Google and, and start ranking further up and up. The, the you know, we talked a little bit about creating good content, but let's dive a little bit more into that. And what does that actually mean? People can say create good content all the time, but what does it mean? I've got to go write a blog every week, or what is it? What what, what would you recommend? Yeah. So exactly like as as I mentioned, getting your content to other people, like stuff that people want to listen to and hear about, like whatever you do, go and find the the people that want to listen and speak there. So find partners that you can hopefully post on their blog rather than your blog. Well, then you get, everyone wants content for their website, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you can offer them content, fantastic. And then they get a fresh perspective, educate their listeners, buy an expert. You know, it's a win-win situation. Interesting. So so would, Sorry to interrupt you, but I've got so many questions. But would that mean that being like a guest blogger on another real estate site help you as your your own business because you can then be linked to that other particular site? Oh, for sure. I mean, if the more niche relevant it is, the the better. And that's a beauty with most businesses that because most like bricks and mortar businesses target a geographical area, right? And so you're not indirect competitors. Like you know, even if you're a lawyer, you know, it's like you. One's in New York, one's in LA, they're not direct competitors. So they can even help each other, you know? Like if another lawyer says that you're a great lawyer and here's, or here's an article about, you know, how to hire a lawyer or whatever, you know, it just gives so much credibility. And so, you know, a real estate investor, if you're not in direct competition, yeah, work together, you know, help each other out. Reciprocal links, kind of, or reciprocal link where two websites are linking to each other is not quite as good as a one-way link right. because Google goes, well, maybe these guys are kind of in cahoots. But it's very natural too. So, like, you know, the the internet's just like the real world. Mm-hmm. It, like, no, no business exists in isolation. So it's okay to link and talk and partner with the people that you, you work with, you know. And it also, it also is in that we're in that age where it's cool to, 
you might partner up with someone who's also big in your space and you might be two competitors but you come together and the force is greater when you're you, you're together than the sum of the parts right because that oh, uh, for sure. and, and that that gives you a better reach across multiple you know as you said multiple, multiple platforms multiple audiences you yourself go and other people's things so i think in general it's a cool way and, and so my question is does google then realize that you might be two big powerhouses coming together to form something great and that then creates even bigger you know reach for, for those particular two people yeah it certainly does and and one thing people like forget is that the world is just so big like you you know your brain can't fathom the size of it uh just yesterday i was on a podcast with a guy that i know who does seo in he lives in saigon in vietnam and we were talking about we're, we're all going to chiang mai in thailand uh next next week because uh, another friend of ours is having a digital marketing conference and there's people flying in from all over the world and yeah we all are competitors but not really. You know, we all do the same thing, but the market is just so massive. You know, none of us could own the whole market. So it's like, let's go and talk and help each other and, you know, what's working, what's not. How do we get better results for our customers? How do we, you know, help improve our own businesses? And, and, and you know, a real estate investor can do that too. And, you know, it, it, you can build your business at the same time. Right. So it's a great opportunity. Awesome. So talk to me a little bit about how you would, what advice you give to someone starting out there trying to start a real estate investing website, an agent, uh, an investor, a crowdfunding website. You know, what to look for, what to look for when hiring an SEO agent uh, or, or a company and, and make sure you're not stuffing yourself up because I have heard that if you get a bad SEO person, they can actually hurt your ranking. Yeah, certainly. They, they really can hurt your rankings and do bad things and waste your money and do nothing. Hiring an SEO company is very hard. Uh, I, I'd certainly make sure that you enjoy working with them, but that they take the, take the time to understand your business. Like uh, a, lot of, a lot of companies, from what I know, uh, don't do that. They have, like as I was talking before about set packages, you know, that's kind of what they do is, oh, we're going to make... 10 blog posts a month and we're going to do this and that and say, well, if that's not how your business works, then it's not going to get the results. Like when we onboard a customer, the first thing we do is ask them lots and lots of stuff about their business. You know, what's important to them? What products sell the best? What do they want to sell more of? You know, like we've got a customer that uh, does printer repairs, which you would think would be a dying industry, but it's a huge industry. It's, it's, mind-boggling and uh we were really well, going to ignore this area called plotter repairs because the search volume wasn't very high but a plotter is this giant printer that's worth like twenty thousand dollars and so really high profit center for him and you know if you don't take the time to ask the customer then you wouldn't know that you know and every industry has those little bits that only the in industry insider need to know so if you're hiring an SEO company, and I do recommend that you do work with a professional, like stay focused on what you do, not <laughs> not SEO, because right, right, yeah. Right. But um, yeah, make sure that they take the time to understand what you want to do, but have a consistent plan. Like no business can grow exponentially. Like you can't just have infinite more customers. Like even Apple, they have to gauge how many iPhones we're going to sell and set up production for that. And if they get that number too wrong, they're gonna lose a lot of money or they're not gonna have enough phones to sell. And you know, a smaller business really needs to tighten that because yeah, if you get 50% more customers, well now you have to hire staff. And if you don't get those customers next month, well, what do you, how do you pay those staff? So you need to have really consistent growth. And SEO is a really great way to do that especially if the website's a bit established because you can, you know, when we have a customer that comes in that's, you know, been around for a little while, you can look at their site and work out what, what's their conversion rate. Okay, the website makes them 10 new customers a month and they, from 1,000 visitors. Cool, so if you want 20 new customers, then all you need is 2,000 visitors. Right. You know, it's, and it's so consistent. So you know, and then you, go ahead. Well, you've got two levers you can play with there increasing the conversion rate or increasing the traffic and traffic's usually the easier way to go but you slowly work on both get a better conversion rate and increase the traffic and you have stable consistent growth right 
No, I, I, and I think you were just you were going to answer my question, but segueing into so we understand now that how, how to un, how to hire a good SEO company. It really comes down to that that sort of two way communication that the SEO company knows exactly what you do and why you do it. But then now, now talk to me about what we can do as business owners to make sure that the funnel is, you know, you've got maybe some free stuff or your blogs or a podcast or some video content that people can go to. It's not just a blank, you know, page of, of buy my widget or whatever it might be or buy my service. Where you need, like, what can we be doing as business owners to consistently um, help you as SEO um, back-end people? Uh, yeah, I was... Scott Scratton, the guy from Unmarketing, I was speaking to him when I was in Philadelphia uh, recently, and he made a great point that you know, social media is optional. You don't have to be out there. And if you're not going to be active on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or whatever, then don't have an account. Do, do what you're going to consistently do and enjoy doing. So like, I don't really like writing blog posts or newsletters and so we don't really have that. I like talking to people. Mm -hmm. And so our sales funnel is to get people on a conversation. Let's have a chat and see if we're a good fit together. And I like working with people that we're a good fit with. I don't, whenever you push and get a customer that you're not a good fit with, it's just a nightmare. So you don't do it. So my answer to that question would be do what you like doing because you'll be more genuine and better at it. You know, Scott Stratton is a huge Twitter guy. He loves tweeting and he's he made like 700,000 tweets or something. You know, you can't fake that. If you don't like doing that, you would never be able to achieve his level of success. He loves doing it. So stick genuine and because that'll help attract the people that that are like you and that you want to work with. You know, the old, the old saying, you know, work with people you know and trust. And because it makes business more enjoyable. So... Yeah, like whatever avenue that you like, stick to that, do lots of it. <laughs> Interesting. No, it's, it's a very good point because a lot of business owners out there, for people who are listening to this show, they think they've got to be across everything. They think they've got to have a YouTube channel. They think they've got to have a podcast. They've got to have this, X, Y. They've got to have blogs. They've got to have newsletters. They've got to, and they forget about the actual business that they run, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they get lost up and like, I need to Instagram something. It's like, why are you Instagramming? Like for someone who's in real estate investing, maybe Instagramming, it's about visual. So I could, I get it if someone was in the fashion industry, Instagram's really powerful for them, right? Because it's pictures. But real estate investing, maybe not so much. So, it, but when you ask them that why question, why, why are you Instagramming? Or why are you doing a certain thing? They're like, oh, because I thought I had to, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's really interesting that you said, stick to what you know. And, and that, that old saying of, and it being, being knowledgeable an inch wide, but a mile deep, you know, so, and using that particular platform to, to, to the nth degree. Um, so well, any, any comments on that, on that particular point? I'm sure you see a lot of that through your business, right? Yeah, for sure, that people are just going too broad and then you, you're not finding your customer. Like it's, it's, you really want to narrow down who's, who's the person, who's your ideal customer? Who can you service the most? I mean, every business is there to fix that, solve some problem. So who's, who's the perfect person for you to solve that problem to? And you know, how do you speak to them? Where are they? Right. So do you give advice then on where you could see from the back end point of view, where those particular customers are, where they're hanging out, whether it be on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, because then you could Gear, gear your content a little bit more about to that particular customer, right? Yeah, we, I mean, you don't want to try and be an expert in all fields. It's really hard. Like SEO is complicated enough as it is. Uh, yeah, we recently had a customer that wanted to build a Facebook funnel. And so uh, an agency that we partner with, we work with them on it. Because they, we help them with their SEO stuff and they help with, uh, us with our Facebook stuff. It's right. Because it's hard. It's you need to be an expert, and I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. Sure, I could have a crack at it, but it wouldn't be as good as they do it. So, sure, yeah, it's it, it's it's a really really good point because I just I, I could talk about this for hours about how there's just so much 
as entrepreneurs, you always want to, regardless whether you're in real estate investing or selling mowers on the side of the, the road, you, you, you think you've got to be in this day and age of 2017 just on every single social platform that there could be. And if you're not, there's that stress in your chat and like you feel, oh God, I didn't tweet out or whatever. You know, it's like, well, yeah. just relax, <laughs> just relax. You know, think about the audience. And I think you, you make a really, really good point. Um, so you, tell me about some of the, some of the bad things that can happen if you don't hire the right SEO and, and, and how can they hurt you or your rankings on, on Google and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> stuff we see all the time is like, so an SSL certificate is a nice trust factor. So that's where you get HTTPS on your URL. It's secure sockets. Mm -hmm. uh, people screw that up and that can really hurt your rankings. Like, you know, because you have duplicate content, the HTTP version, the HTTPS version. Uh, backlinks is certainly a very tricky uh, area. Like, the heart of Google is based on backlinks. And so you can manipulate the search engine by adding links. Mm -hmm. And Google knows this. And they, about four years ago, they brought out an algorithm update called Penguin to specifically target people that were making backlinks artificially, you know, backlinks that don't add any value and de-indexing websites and penalizing websites. And so, yeah, if you're working with a dodgy SEO company that's artificially making backlinks, well, you can get your website de-indexed. And yeah, that's going to really hurt. Yeah, there's, there's generally you pay, you get what you pay for, you know, like, I'm sure everybody listening has received a spammy email, you know, oh, we'll SEO your website for $200. It's great. Like, go and pay that and see what you get. You know, like, it's just the wrong mindset, you know, like, just like real estate investing, it's an investment. SEO is an investment. You know, like, you're, you're building your brand and your reputation. Do you, if you want, do you want to do it on cheap? You know, do you want a cheap, crappy brand or do you want something that's long lasting? And it's not about like today even, it's about the next year, the next 10 years. Like it's, it's forever growing and that you're getting a return on that investment. That you spend a thousand or 10,000 and why, why should it stop there? Like we do six month strategies because we reassess after that six months and go, well, surely we should expand now, right? Like why why are we doing the same thing as we did last six months? You know, if you were spending three grand now, I mean, surely you're making thirty grand a year a month on that three grand investment. Well, then why wouldn't you up it to six grand? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Hmm. No, it's it, it's really it's really interesting to to talk about that sort of stuff and 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 what value you get, right? And what, what, what value you place on SEO. And if you don't know enough about it, you think I'm just going to be cheap and I want to just get someone who can do it for five bucks an hour and, and, and hopefully that's going to, you know, cause me to be the number one ranking. Probably not. <laughs> so yeah, well, one, one, one thing to interrupt is uh, so many businesses I speak with, one of the first questions I ask them is, you know, what's your average customer worth? And they don't know. And I go, man, like how can we work out stuff if you don't know how much a customer's worth? Because a really simple model is knowing how much your customer's worth, what's your average conversion rate from your website, and then you can know how much you can spend, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I get this much traffic. Well, okay, this much traf more traffic would be worth this much money for you. Right, right. The math is so simple, right. but you need to know how much is your average customer worth. Right. No, it's very interesting. So how would someone determine that just through their products that they're selling on their, on their website and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you should hopefully you can speak to your accountant and go, okay, these are our customers, and man, just add up what they spend and divide it by their number of people. Yeah, right, right. It's 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 so so interesting. So let's go back to the uh, the question I asked earlier in the, in the program. I'm I'm walking to a restaurant. I've got my menu. What's on it on the menu for for Ardor SEO? Walk us through, you know, the free stuff, and then more into the the, the nuts and bolts, and maybe there's some off mar off menu stuff that you don't you know you don't offer uh, on the on the surface. Yeah, so we uh, as we started as a backlink company, uh, the vast majority of our original customers were SEO companies because you know when we're selling backlinks, it's like if we got a retail customer, they'd have one website, but if we get an SEO customer, like they might have a hundred websites. So it worked really well. But uh, then we started you know, providing more services for them, content and audits and implementation. And so, well, geez, they're just marking up all of our services, so why don't we do it ourselves? But then uh, 
you know how I spoke to you about packages that I think they're total BS, that we totally went away from that and and went, okay, let's speak to the customer, work what, out what they want. And you need to really understand where they are. Like a, a mechanic can't fix your car without knowing what's wrong with it, right? Like they have to lift up the hood and get in there and they charge for that and we do too. Uh, we we have an initial call with a, where we ask your business goals, but then we put together a strategy for you, and we have a set price for that. Uh, what's that? How much and, is that worth? Uh, Five ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And with with this, we do what's called a quick wins audit. So a quick wins audit works out the fastest things to get you profitable. You know, maybe keywords that you're on page two for. Page two gets no traffic. <laughs> You know things that you can do to really rapidly move your cust- your website forward, and then we look at a six month strategy. So this from our initial call, we work out your goals, and then we go, okay, this is what you need to do to achieve those goals, and that's what we recommend. And it's a really in depth strategy uh, that's super valuable. That you know you can go and implement it with us. We hope you implement it with us, but you can go and take it to another SEO agency or do it yourself or whatever you'd like. And the reason we do it at a really super competitive rate, right? Like that is a super awesome price because we, well, we want you to know that it's valuable. That's why you pay for it because otherwise people don't pay any attention. But we want partnerships. Like I always say to customers, you know, we don't want you for one month. We, I want you to work with us for the rest of your life. Right. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> we want to grow your business, and so we'll have you making more money each and every month. And the reason why we do the quick wins audit is we know that as soon as you can cover the investment that you have with us, well then you are a customer for life. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're spending fifteen hundred bucks or fifteen thousand bucks. You know, if you're making, you know, ten X on that, well happy days. And so we win when you win, and that's exactly what we try and achieve. So do you then custom so you got the first six nine at five ninety nine uh, and then do you go into like a monthly sort of um, uh, retainer? Is that is that how it works? Yeah. So the so the six month strategy is this is what we recommend to do this over this point in time, and uh, this is how much we estimate you should in, invest. And we know that every business is a bit different. Some people some people have you know big pocket deep pockets, and they want to go. Okay, can you do it all right now? Right. And we can't do it all right now because because. Uh, well, it takes time to write content and implement things and and backlink acquisition takes considerable time. But we can shorten it down to like a three month period, you know, speed it up. Because well, if you want the results now, why not? And sometimes people, you know, are a bit skittish and don't want to invest so much and so we can kind of broad it out. So it, it it's a strategy of what we recommend, but we can tailor it more to make sure that it fits your goals. Interesting. Interesting. And then, so from a long-term point of view, you always need SEO, right? We, you know, as a business owner, you will never not, not, not need it, right? Well, yeah, I think you'd be silly, stop doing it. I mean, why? If it, you're getting a return on it, so like people often talk to me about AdWords versus SEO, and AdWords is great, like it's so much more measurable, which is Google does that on a purpose, right? Because mm-hmm. they don't make any money from SEO; they make all their money from AdWords. Right. And so they provide lots of tools and lots of helpful stuff to make AdWords very good. And it is good. And, but it's not as good because it's not compounding. You know, if you spend $1,000 a month on AdWords, you get X amount of clicks. And as soon as you stop spending, you stop getting. And it, and it actually will get more, compa- uh, more expensive over time as every niche gets more and more competitive. But SEO is compounding. So if you spend $1,000 a month, and you get X amount of traffic, you know, next month you get X plus two, X right. plus four, it just like keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it, it's a better long term. But AdWords, if you've got it converting and making profit, why would you ever turn it off? Right. You know, if you if thousand dollars is making you five thousand dollars, great, it's not as good as SEO, but why would you turn that off? Yep. No, hundred percent. So it sounds like SEO is a, is one of the tools in the in the online digital marketing tool belt, right? There's you know, there's actual actual ads, you know, the ad words and the clicks, mm-hmm. but then SEO is also does play a role uh, in that. And, and I, I assume that from a from a well rounded strategy, you'd need a little bit of everything, correct? Well, you don't need ad words. Ad, like ad words gets about two percent of the clicks, so ninety eight percent goes to the organic. In fact, 
37 percent goes to the number one position so you know two percent up to 37 is a huge difference but uh, obviously getting to that number one position is a lot of work especially for very valuable keywords but you can buy it instantly with adwords so if you if you're starting out in business adwords can be a great place to start because it's instant and especially if you don't know a market or a keyword you can test it out you know say you wanted to you know, real estate investing in Arizona and you wanted to test that keyword and so you can go and buy it and maybe that's a terrible market and it just doesn't work okay then turn it off change up where yeah where if you've gone and built all the content and backlinks and SEO your website which takes longer and you rank for it and then you go oh that's a terrible market I don't want to be there well you're, you're there now <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it does have certain certain advantages for sure Interesting. What's your number one tip you can give someone who's starting out with SEO? Um, they're, they're, they're like a, a newborn foal, they're wobbly on their legs. How do you, what, what's, what's the, the number one tip when it comes to SEO and, and business? I, at, on a technical side, I wouldn't go for any of those like square, Squarespace sort of websites. Uh, they're just not extensible. They are great for building a simple website, but when you want to grow later, it's a pain in the ass. WordPress is not as hard as you might think, and you can really find a cheap web designer to put it together for you. It doesn't have to cost that much, and you can learn the basics if you want to do it, do it yourself. But uh, really, I would focus. If I was starting out on business, I would focus on sales and hiring people to do that sort of stuff for me. <laughs> no, that's that's is, good, 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 good advice. I think I think your analogy earlier on, which was. Uh, you know, you, you're not into doing your, your accounts, and so you know you know you know enough about it to be dangerous, but you do yeah. you don't want to do it each and every month, right? Yeah, for sure. And it's the same thing. I mean, when you get sick, you you go to a doctor. You don't go to med school, <laughs> but but you should understand what the doctor's saying. And that's the same thing. Focus on your business. Focus on sales. Bringing in new customers, and you know, work with people you like working with on on marketing. And SEO is just one 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 thing. You know, you can use Facebook marketing or whatever. Look at your competition, like especially your non-direct competitors. Like, unless you've invented some warp drive, you know, you're not the first person in the world to do this. So go and see what the other people are doing and what works for them. Right. You know, and see if you can find someone that can help implement that same thing. Interesting. Mate. I want to thank you so much for, I want to be conscious of your time, but a few more questions before we wrap up. So, so what is 2017, um, what is the outlook for 2017 and beyond for personal and business wise? Uh, yeah, um, so I've been writing a book on digital marketing and I tell you right now, I never write a book. It is, Jesus, it's so much work. <laughs> Mate, I'm in the same boat as you. It's a oh, lot of work. <laughs> man, it, it's been nearly a year and a half now and um, I'm working with a content guy. It's like so hard. But it's, yeah, you know, uh, got a book coming out uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, been working on public speaking to promote my book uh, and educate people on the world of digital marketing. And yeah, that's that's where our growth is coming. Nice, man. Nice. Well, I know I ask my uh, guests to always give me their top five investing tips. Ready to get into it? Uh, sure. Sure. Mate, what is the daily habit that you practice to keep on track towards your goals? Uh, yeah, habits are really important. I generally get up at five in the morning every morning, go and do my yoga and be physically fit and centered. But then, yeah, organize my day and work out what I want to do. A really great book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, mm -hmm. where it talks about you know, doing the important things first and it, it, getting that hard stuff done first is super important that's because that's the stuff that moves you forward right not the busy work right right no it's it's uh are you being active or are you being effective right there's that always yeah. that, that sort of thing and what is it that eat the green frog first in the first in the morning what's it what's it called is that it yeah 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 if your job's to eat frogs you should eat them first thing in the morning yeah. and if your job's to eat two two frogs you should eat the big one first yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Mark Twain, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> who who has been the most influential person in your career to date? Oh, I mean, my father is certainly the guy that pushed me to be an entrepreneur uh, from originally. So that that is certainly helpful. But the power of networking is so important. Like, you know, 
going to Saigon a couple months ago to meet, meet a whole bunch of guys that work in my industry was super empowering. I saw a friend that I, lives in the Philippines that I hadn't seen in ages. And he used to be a management consultant for IBM. And you know, we've got a pretty big team now and it's well beyond my level of knowing how to manage them. You know? And he gave me some amazing advice, you know, and it's that was free and over two beers, you know, and that just oh man, it helped restructure our company and you know, make management so much easier. I can't wait to see him next week and this is the second time I've given him a shout out in, <laughs> in, in two days. Hey, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Any kickbacks, you'll be, you'll be thanking him for a few more beers, right? <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, you, so your dad's been the most influential person in your career, you think, and, and also networking. I, I think yeah, I, for I, sure. I, I think yeah. those two things are, you know, your net worth is a result of your network. So it's always mm-hmm. really, really important. Um, being an online guy with your online tools, what is the most influential tool in your business to date? Oh, I mean, I make, I live on email. I mean, that's what I do all the time. And uh, there's a little uh, Gmail is what we use for email. And uh, Boomerang mm-hmm. is this tool that I use where you can bring emails back. And I use that for project management. <laughs> like whenever I have staff that uh, need them to do some job, I bring it back on whatever the due date is when – you know, a customer has a payment issue or whatever, I bring it back on a due date. And people just go, man, this guy never forgets anything. You know, it's, <laughs> it's super great. I, I, you can't rely on your memory, you know? So it's super tool. Makes Boom, it real easy. I, I think I need to start implementing that in my business because uh, I, I'm a big list guy. I use a lot of lists, writing it down, getting it out of my head. And I use uh, smart sheets, uh, different you know, programs. But I think I'm about to add Boomerang to, to, my, to the repertoire. Uh, Chris, what has been the biggest failure in your career to date and what did you learn from that failure? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, we had a pretty tough time a couple of years back uh, I, and I, I think that was a lot of me not acquiring business knowledge. Like I'm a software engineer, I kind of fell into business and we got a bit wobbly as we grew. We grew fast and didn't know how to do it, right? Like I and I hadn't spent enough time on learning those skills. And yeah, thankfully we didn't die, but it, it, we got really wobbly. But you know, I've spent a lot of time reading books about how to hire people, like good people, how to lead people, you know, get leadership training, learning the business skills that are super important. So yeah, uh, <laughs> trying to find out where you're weak and strengthen those bits, it's, it's, it's hard, but that, does that answer that question? No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's great. It's a great, que- it's a great answer because it's all, it's all good content because that, that's right. People, people come from so many different backgrounds when they start their own businesses. It's not just in real estate but in any – being an entrepreneur in general. And, you know, you're, you're, you're a software engineer. I was a formal structural engineer. You know, half of my colleagues wouldn't know how to hold a room or, you know, that, is a, that leadership skills that you need to drive a team forward towards a goal mm. takes, takes a little bit more than, than just, you know, geeking out over numbers or something like that and and it takes a certain type of person but it also takes a certain type of person to identify those weaknesses and then go out and fix them and i think that's really really important so much so like we had one of our uh, team calls just yesterday with a bunch of the team leads and uh, one guy who's excellent at his job but he's not a great uh, leader and he was complaining about having to follow up on staff to get jobs done and i've recently just read jack walsh his book, the CEO of uh, General Electric. Yep. And and one thing that I that really resonated with me in that book is that he said he's constantly following up on his executives. And you know, these are guys that run billion dollar divisions, you know, like you know, a whole country for GE. And he's his job is to follow up, make sure they get their job done and check on their work. Yep. I'm like and I ex- explain that to you know one of our leaders and saying it's your job. That's what you do. Right. You know, if Jack Walsh can't figure out how to get away from that, you can't either. <laughs> <laughs> what was his answer to that? Yeah, he, well, he, I think he just kind of went, it got a bit, well, more humble than, but yeah, okay. It's, it's your job to inspire people and 
help them do their work, you know? Right, right. And then check up on it, make sure it is done mm. properly and on time. So, yeah. Uh, Chris, mate, look, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you on the show today. Where can people reach you if they want to continue the conversation, learn more about SEO, um, check out your book that's coming out at the beginning of next year? Yeah. So if they go to Google and they type in the coolest guy in SEO, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see my pretty face. Uh, just click on there. And if you go to our website, ardorseo.com, that's A-R-D-O-R-S-E-O.com slash podcast, there'll be a uh, nice little surprise there for you. Awesome, man. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day just to you know, share the knowledge about SEO. It's, it's, it seems like a very, very intense thing uh, that I'm not going to pretend to know what it, what it is. About. <laughs> but, but for any uh, business owner out there, I think the biggest takeaway pieces of advice is that it's, it's like a mechanic, like a doctor. Yeah, you, I think you hit the nail on the head where you said, when you get sick, you don't go to med school, you go to a doctor. Um, understand the basics of SEO for any any starting business and then go and hire professionals like yourself. Um, be very conscious of, of this type of content, I think was really a good takeaway. Uh, and, and also don't, don't, be, don't be too cheap with it. Understand what the value of your customers are and then go and look at, okay, well, if I want to scale it from 100 customers to 500 customers and that's going to make me you know, 10x, as you said, then you can go and spend that, uh, that on marketing. D- did I leave anything out? Nope, that's it in a nutshell. All right, mate. Well, look, thank you so much for dropping by. Enjoy the rest of your week and we will catch up soon. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Cheers, mate. Well, there you have it. Another great episode jam-packed full of some awesome advice and actual steps uh, and just some golden nuggets. So if you are interested to learn about more, please hit, hit up my website, which is readgoosens.com. Click on the podcast tab. It will take you straight to Chris's website where you can learn a lot more about SEO, find out a little bit more about what he does and how he can help you grow your business. I want to thank you again so much for taking some time out of your day to tune in to continue to grow your real estate investing knowledge because that's what we're all about here on this show, continuing to grow your financial IQ. So until next Next week, take care, be safe, and remember, happy investing.